I'm now building my second iOS app and I'm constantly rewriting things to better manage the data flow, better structure the code and in general trying to learn from the mistakes I've made with my first app. So in this video I want to share how I structure everything within the app to make it easier to maintain and evolve in the long term. I'll start with my current app that is already in the App Store. It was recently renamed to Ripples, but previously it was called Checker. And even before that, it was Waffles. So you can imagine the naming in the code base is a bit all over the place. As in most Swift UI apps, the bulk of the code are views. My main abstract might look a bit messy to an outside observer, but those commented bits are just things like cleaning up the database or generating test data when the app starts. I keep them just in line wrapped within if debug statements so I don't accidentally commit them into the production version. This kind of thing wouldn't fly when working on a team project but as a solo developer I can afford this type of shortcuts. My views folder is a flat list of views that assemble the final app each in its own folder so it can hold additional assets for the components or in some cases subcomponents that make sense only in the context context of the main component. Another big part of any app is of course data. In most cases there would be some kind of architecture that involves models, but what's interesting about this app specifically is that there is no model in any shape or form. All data is being read from database in a bunch of structs and then fed directly into the view hierarchy. Initially with this data architecture, I try to mimic some ideas that I've used in the past in web development to have this global data store that acts like a state for the whole app and Every time the data changes, I would update this global store and the whole app would re-render, keeping all the views perfectly in sync. I really like the simplicity of this approach, but turns out while SwiftUI tries to be very efficient with rendering, there is no way around the fact that recreating the whole view hierarchy on every single state change will be slow if there are enough views on the screen which is exactly the case with Ripples on its board's gallery view. So over time, I've come up with a few optimizations and techniques how to keep the performance manageable, even with my current data design, but eventually I'm going to migrate everything to Swift data and take advantage of the Swift observation framework. I'm already taking this approach with the new app. I'm going to show how it looks there a bit later. This custom data architecture is also powered by a custom database layer, which is in inside database adapters and database stores folders. Because it was my first iOS app, I really wanted to explore things as close to the hardware as possible to really understand how everything is wired together before I just take off the shelf packages for everything and abstract away the internals. So I built myself a database adapter, migrations engine, all of that stuff. And I definitely learned a lot and I don't regret anything. But as I mentioned, now it makes much more sense just to use Swift data because it's way more production ready now compared to when I was just starting this app. Helpers folder is where I keep helper classes with a bunch of static method that I use all over the app like operations on lists, generating test data, unit conversion, all of that input output style of functions without any side effects. Inside the views I try to keep only the code that is related to the view logic like gesture handling for example. Everything else I try to extract into those reusable units as much as possible. Lib is your usual junk drawer folder that inevitably appears in any project sooner or later. Here I keep all the things that don't fit anywhere else but are too specific to create a top level folder just for them like view modifiers, telemetry codes, and all kinds of global type extensions. So views, data adapters, helpers, and leap hold a big chunk of the project's code. Some other major parts are app intents, shortcuts, and widgets. They are more or less standalone and don't contribute much to the main structure. And there is also the assets catalog with a few custom colors and images like social media icons. It's also a bit messy at the moment and it looks much cleaner in the new app. One other important thing I keep in the code base is a markdown file with some important app metadata like title, subtitle and keyword list and I track how they change from version to version trying to 
estimate roughly how my current metadata performs in terms of App Store search optimization and tweaking it slightly with every release. And I hope one day App Store Connect will have similar feature natively. Now moving to the new app. The app is called Lean. It's for tracking intermittent fasting that I got into about a year ago. The structure is very similar. Most of the code is inside the views folder, but I've added a dedicated folder for view modifiers that were previously inside the lib. I started to use them way more to extract reusable parts of views, so they graduated to their own top-level folder. Similar helpers and lib, and instead of my custom database adapters, now there is a models folder with Swift data models. The model itself usually has a few static properties with custom fetch descriptors that I can then reuse in my views and not to write those predicates every single time. And then some static methods that handle business logic, like scheduling a notification when user starts a new fast. Previously, this kind of code would be in a view, but now when I have this concept of a model in my architecture, it makes much more sense to keep it here and to make views even leaner. One huge mistake I'm fixing with this app is not having a separate developer and production version of the app that I can install on the same device at the same time. With Ripples, the issue is I build it for myself and I use it to track my day-to-day -day stuff. And because it uses the same bundle ID, every time I install a new build from Xcode to my phone, it overrides the production version installed from the App Store that has all my real data. The data itself is not lost because it syncs through iCloud and it automatically supports dev and prod environments. But to get to the data, I need to reinstall the app from the App Store every single time. Super annoying. So this time, because again, I'll be using Lean every day myself, I needed to fix this issue. The best way I could think of is to have a separate XC config files for dev and release versions that have values for bundle identifier, database file, app icon, everything to make it look like two different apps to iOS. Then I can set an appropriate config file for each build flavor. And this also requires two separate apps in App Store Connect in order for all the in-app purchase stuff to be separate as well. One of these apps will go live eventually and another one will forever be in this draft state. If I now open Asset Catalog, one improvement you'll notice is how colors are structured. While well, Ripples uses mostly default iOS color palette. For Lean, I wanted the overall vibe to be warmer and cozier, so I had to come up with a custom theme. While designing the UI, I first tuned everything visually to the way I like it and also so everything has enough contrast and legible in different scenarios like dark and light theme. I then started to unify the repeating or similar colors and put everything into a cohesive color scheme. It will grow over time, but I try to keep only the minimum necessary number of colors. These kind of constraints make designing and implementing the UIs much simpler because everything is way more reusable and the number of decisions I have to make goes down. The whole code base structure is constantly evolving. I'm tweaking and changing stuff. That's one of the reasons I haven't released Lean yet, but I think of it as an investment that will pay out in the long term. 